This is the very first Age of Sigmar starter set. This is the box that kicked it all off in 2015. And in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing this and reviewing it. And stay tuned till the end of the video because you guys are going to find out what project I've got planned for this starter set. Stay tuned. So this is the very first Age of Sigmar starter set. Now this came out in 2015. There was an awful lot of commotion about this box because this was the start of Age of Sigmar. This replaced fantasy, Warhammer fantasy that was completely destroyed in the end times. Games Workshop wanted a, wanted a fresh start. They really wanted to update their fantasy side and personally I think it was one of the best things that they ever did. Um, this was met with a lot of mixed reactions. A lot of people uh, hated what they did with the old fantasy world. Um, but now it kind of seems that a lot of people really like Age of Sigmar but they still miss a lot of the old world like the lore and everything like that. I really miss the world, the old world lore and um, I wish some of it was kind of brought forward but there's no point in looking back at it too much. Um, yeah so very mixed reactions when this first came out. A lot of people didn't want anything to do with it, they wanted to draw fantasy, they completely disowned it. Um, a lot of people were looking forward to the change but this took a while to settle in because when they brought this out we had no idea what was going on. We had no idea what this is going to be like. It was released with zero points so if you wanted to build an army it was literally build what you want, uh, bring what you want and you can have and basically it was like it said that base sizes don't matter because a lot of people had to switch over from their square bases to the newer ones. So a lot of people were very annoyed at this. Me personally, I thought this box was fantastic when it came out. I really couldn't wait to get my hands on this. I really wanted to go with the Stormcast Eternals. So firstly, there is two brand new armies in this. These are the first two new armies for Age of Sigmar. We have the Chaos side, which is Corgus Cull's uh, Gortide, and we have Vandus Hammerhands, uh, Stormcast Eternals. Now these are two brand new armies, and I was really looking forward to the Stormcast. The big metallic guys, they look awesome especially the prosecutors and their big angelic wings but when I got a better look at the chaos guys I really fell in love with them so there is a lot in this box um, you get your Lord Celestine on Dracot which is Vandus Hammerhand one Lord Relictor, three Retributors, three Prosecutors and ten Liberators so we get a look at all these on the sprue when I come to it um, but on the chaos side you get the mighty Warlord of Corn, which is Corgus Cull the Blood Secretor, Blood Stoker, the Corgrat, which is the big heavy guy, five blood, five blood Warriors, which is like your elite warriors, and 20 Blood Reavers, which are the unsung heroes of this box. These models are fantastic. So let's jump straight into it and see what it is like inside this box. Now, for some reason I had like two models clipped off the sprues and put together already. I must have tried to, well, I must have started some project a while ago. Uh, that I can't think of so I'm not going to go into too much detail with the book on how things are like the instruction booklet it's an instruction booklet there's not too much to say about it but one thing is that I think this is around the time that Games Workshop started designing their models um, a bit more differently because a lot of the Warhammer models back then well before pre-2015 a lot of them were like this where it was like you get your body you get your arms and you get your head and you stick them on very basic but a lot of guys were starting to come out like this where it was like a leg attached to a body and then you have the two arms that are joined by the center they were designed very differently and they were kind of a little bit more trickier to put together but the models look fantastic i'm just trying to get another example here very quickly uh, like here for the blood secretor like this is his shoulder pad that's connected down to some part that connects to his leg. So they were designed very differently and they weren't too hard to put together. But that's just the way they kind of went going forward after that. Now the first two sprues we're going to have a look at are identical. Is it these two? Yes, these two are identical. These sprues have the prosecutors and the blood reavers. Now the prosecutors are the angelic looking guys that come down with their big white wings, look amazing and are a pain in the ass to paint if you glue these wings on first. So quick tip when if you're gluing any prosecutors, do the wings separate then glue them on once they're finished painting. They have some liberators here, big chunky models, uh, they're almost like one solid piece nearly. 
Yeah, lots of cool details. My favourite part of the prosecutors, I love the wings, the wings are amazing, but is how they're connected to the base, so it looks like they're flying. You have like this parchment part coming down from the hip that's connected to a rock, so they are looks like they're in mid-air. Really cool uh, looking models here, you can get a proper look at the Stormcast shields. Um, this is all brand new in 2015, it's kind of weird to think about it now. Uh, here you get a good look at the amazing Blood Reavers. Now, for guys that are like your frontline troops, these are amazingly detailed. And there's 20 of these in the box. I think it's like like 10 and 10. So like there's two dupl there's two of each kind of model. Uh, but each one of these guys is full of details. These are amazing. I absolutely love the Blood Reavers. Um, I just hopefully you get to see them on the battlefield a bit more. So this is the other sprue with the other prosecutor, um, but it's also the sprue with, if I can find it, here he is, is the banner guy for the Stormcast of Tournaments. I'm trying to think of his name, I keep forgetting his name. The Lord Relictor, that's what his name is. He is the, he's like the guy that can regenerate their health and stuff like that. Uh, here you can see his big skeletal banner, which is really cool, like melted candles on the top. Lots of amazing details on this guy. Really helps him stand out a lot more. You can see some of the, is it the Liberators are the big guys? Retributors. These are like your heavy hitters for the Stormcast. Here you can see like they have their two-handed big massive hammer. Uh, I think there's only three of these in the set, so these are your heavy hitters. You're not going to see them too often. Here you can see a bit of Vandis Hammer hand up here. The main guy himself with like a couple of uh, parchment parts as well. You see him in the next sprue because he rides atop of. Is it this sprue? No, it's the other one. He rides atop uh, a Drakoth, which was like a new monster, which was like a big dragon. Well, like, kind of like a, like a small. Well, I don't say big dragon or a small dragon, but it's kind of like a mini dragon that he rode across on. Really cool model, very big. Here you can see its head. So you can see a lot of cool details on that. Uh, very ornate, a lot of designs on it, really cool looking. And then of course, on, I'm trying to see what are these are. Yeah, these are all for Vandis Hammerhand and Istracot, Istracot as well. So the Blood Secretor, which is the banner guy for the, make sure I get this in frame, there we go. For the Chaos Eye, he has this amazing banner with a symbol of corn on it, it's all made of like bone and everything like that. Really cool, really nice looking model even without it. He stands up with the with the axe as well and a really nice looking pose, which is amazing. And then we come to my favorite model of the whole box, Corgus Cull, you can see part of him here. To me, he is the main guy of this box. I absolutely love him. He has, I think it's pronounced, I was gonna say Karnak, but he has Warhound and Karnak is the other Warhound for Chaos. Yeah, but he has one by his side, big cape. He has this chain that he holds the warhand, the warhound with. Uh, lots of armor here. The big realm splitter axe. Really cool detail on this guy. I'm looking forward to getting him together. The final sprue has a mixture of a bit of everything. You have your blood warriors, which are your elite for the corn army. Uh, which these are very similar uh, to chaos space marines, which I kind of like in a way. Um, chaos is chaos, I'm not really going to complain about that, but they look amazing. Their stomachs here, which you can see here, have like an open mouth in them and everything like that. So lots of fleshy parts, as well as a lot of armor on these guys. Um, even their axes, it, it looks like they're made out of flesh. Uh, this is the Blood Secretor or the Blood Stalker, I get these guys mixed up. But with the Chaos size, you get a big monster. Um, and this is the guy that's in control of him, he has like the whip and everything. He's like his handler, and that is the Kargaroth, which is the big, muscly, beastly, hulking looking guy here. I wasn't too mad on this guy at the start because he has no head. He has like a skull kind of in where his head should be, but it's like a small human skull. It's weird, but he has a lot of amazing details like skulls uh, sticking out of his body parts and everything like that. So it is a cool model. I grew to like it over time. I'm just trying to see what that piece is. I don't know what that's belonged to. But uh, yeah, he is a great model. He's big, he's chunky. 
Um, maybe I might do a bit of a conversion for the head or something like that. I might put a bigger skull in there to make them, make them stand out a little bit more. So that's it for the sprues. Um, as I said, like this was, you get your bases. It was kind of hard to tell what base sizes everything was going to be in Age of Sigmar because a lot of these are big models except for the Blood Reavers. They were the only kind of like normal size guys. You got your usual stuff as well. You got your dice. Uh, you got your transfers, which honestly, I don't think you, see, you get transfers a lot anymore. Um, the base sizes aren't too big for the bigger guys for Fantasy Hammerhand on the Dracoth. This would have been for the Blood Secretor, Corvus Cult base is pretty big, but nothing too massively. Now, one of the things that was so confusing about this game. Uh, with every starter set, well I'm pretty sure with every starter set you get, you get your rule book. This was the Age of Sigmar rule book. Four pages. This game was very loose when it first came out. I don't want to say very loose, there is rules. Points wise, it was very loose. And I think to this day, these rules are nearly almost the same. These are like the very basic rules and in one way, I commend I commend them for this because like age of, like any warmer rule book is a big fucking thing. There's a lot of stuff to get through. There's a lot of stuff to remember. They totally simplified it. Simplified it with this rule book. Um, and to be honest with you, like I don't want to overpraise it too much because I might sound like a bit of a fanboy, but over time they showed that this worked and it did really well for them and. You know, they were kind of doing the right thing at the right time. They had to do something different for Warhammer Fantasy to re rejuvenate it. And then of course, we got this other book which kind of introduces like the lore of Age of Sigmar. Um, well you say the lore of Age of Sigmar, it's more about the Stormcast and the Chaos. Um, a lot of stuff in Age of Sigmar doesn't really get uh, bulked out until the coming years. Like we're still getting new stuff in Age of Sigmar, but like if you would have got this, you would have thought this is the rule book because this is pretty chunky. There's a lot of pages in it. You get a look at your War Scrolls. This is the brand new thing at the time. Uh, instead of the old fantasy profiles, uh, no points written on it. Movement, wounds, bravery, save. Um, amazing. Like the major difference with the small rule was. I think this way, I think, actually I think this rule is in 40k as well now. To hit something you don't compare it to a chart anymore, it's just based on what weapon you have. So no matter who you're hitting, a big guy or a small guy, it's always going to be a 3 plus to hit with the Axe of Corn and with the Mighty Lord of Corn. So this book is amazing because there's a lot of cool pictures in it and you get to see a lot of the old uh, Age of Sigmar or fantasy models on round bases. I was a hundred percent for round bases. I didn't like square bases um, Each big chunky units of square bases It was just a pain in the ass. They didn't look nice and yeah, here you can see like a more fleshed out Corn army uh, This is a more fleshed out Age of Sigmar army, but it's just a lot of the more of the same models that were in the set There's nothing new in this so with the box review, what have I got planned for this box? Well for the longest time, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this on a couple of videos, that I've been wanting to create and build my own lore for Age of Sigmar. And that's exactly what I'm going to be start doing over the next couple of months. This starter box is going to be the beginning of a project called the Battle at Fair Fairy. And this is going to be a story based around one of the cities of Sigmar in the realm of beasts. We're going to have their own people in it and stuff like that. I'm going to try and create something and bring this city to life. That's hopefully going to be full of lore and lots of potential so kind of going forward in the next couple of months i'm going to be doing my own stuff not just painting the same colors that come in the box i'm going to be trying giving these models their own thing with their own colors and their own lore and the story to back it up so the battle of fair Fag is going to be starting soon so hopefully you guys will watch it like it and give me some good feedback as well but if you like this video make sure to let me know in the comment section below make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.